You. Humanity's best weapon. Master Chief, huh? Um, yeah, that was one of the, the major challenges of our production, was figuring out how to bring these 55-pound chunks of plastic alive and make them seem not like they're an impediment to your motion, but that they actually make you superhuman and super capable, right? Uh, and it was a long process. It was a, it was a big fight, obviously, in, in terms of trying to, to get something that we all were happy with. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, I think we, we have achieved that. The action sequences are spectacular. Um, but it wasn't, it wasn't easily done. It was a lot of hard work and effort from our parts to train physically to be able to manipulate the suits and move them around in a way that felt authentic uh, from production's aspect in terms of learning how to shoot them and how to make them look uh, as best as possible. Um, you know, they break a lot. They break a lot. The so we suits have a, in the games don't break at all. You can do anything. Uh, you, right. One of my favorite people on set in Budapest is this guy named Ballant, who's been had a, a major uh, job fixing increase this suits. year. Uh, and he just <laughs> runs around fixing suits all day long for all the Spartans. Yeah. He's like picking up broken pieces yeah. and putting them back together. It's like together. a car crash out there <laughs> after every action scene. <laughs> The Master Chief was enhanced and trained for one purpose. To win this war, he and the other Spartans are our only effective weapons against the Covenant. I mean, I think that, um, you know, we started from a place of canon, and we've talked about the Halo Silver timeline being, being rooted in canon but taking its own branch, right? And that was really driven by allowing the story to go where it needed to go. And so we, you know, part of the boot camp was, so everybody had a core understanding of, of canon, and part of the boot camp was also helping people understand not just what a thing was, but what it means to players and what it means to fans. Because at the end of the day, that kind of connection is the thing that's important versus the exact details of the thing itself. And so as the story developed, you know, it became, there were places where we needed to move away from how we've told certain stories before. And, and that was really, you know, there was day-to-day -day decisions. It wasn't a formula. It wasn't a, we can go do whatever want we want. It's, A, we want to always make sure we're telling a Halo story and we're in the Halo universe. And the characters feel like the same, uh, you know, in their spirit, the same characters. But the story is going to necessitate some changes. And being able to really dramatize certain character moments does mean shifting story a little bit to really let that character drama come through. And I think those are the ones where, you know, sometimes it's, it's a gut decision on how far you can stray or not. I think, you know, the action and the battles um, in the show uh, are, are new events. And, and hopefully that's something that's delightful for fans, right? That they get to see something new, because that was so important for us. It's not a rehashing or just showing you the things you may have experienced before. It's let's give you some new Halo experiences in this different format and in this different story, but all, all uh, with the goal of, of, of telling a, a, a very relatable character story with a huge hero. Covenant forces appear to be excavating some kind of object. When I touched the object, I felt something. I felt different. It was mind expanding. <laughs> uh, I started with a boot camp in Seattle, as, as we said, where 343 took me through you know, a, a great deal of Halo lore and mythology in a very short period of time. Um, I then went and explored my own uh, Halo stuff, I read a couple of the novels, uh, I watched all the cinematics from the games, obviously, to see, you know, what had been established in the games, that was very important. Um, and, and then it was a matter of, obviously, the physical training, learning how to manipulate the suit, um, and, then it was, and then it's really a matter of story, right? It's a matter of uh, reading the scripts that were coming in, seeing where the story was going, where it wanted to, where it wanted to go, and how was I uh, going to use my own personality, 
uh, impulses and humanity to pass through that experience, right? Um, because at the end of the day, if, if it's not felt, if it's not true, if it's not authentic, it's not going to be something that anybody's going to watch. It's not going to be interesting. Um, and so that was my process, was to try to stay as true to my own personal instincts and artistic integrity as possible while help, trying to help uh, all of us find the most interesting and uh, best story, best avenue for storytelling possible. And one of the things I'll say uh, is in, in casting Pablo, he has so many of, of the attributes when he talks about his instincts. Um, he's a very, uh, very focused and um, sort of intense individual when it comes to understanding the character. And, and, and that shows in, in how he embodies the chief. Um, and so that was something that was also immediately evident, and, and such curiosity, such curiosity around the IP and the character um, that, uh, yeah, it, it, it made it very straightforward in terms of, of Pablo embodying the chief.